For a lot of people with the financial means, the holidays are often a time of excess. Extra food on the table and in your belly, extra gifts lying around that you don't really need, and extra time off. But you don't need to load up on pointless knickknacks and weird foam pillows that nobody is ever actually going to use to get all of your holiday shopping and giving done this year. There are ways to shop responsibly, ethically, and ways to give back during the holidays that can make a big impact. And we're here to walk you through them. Learn about ethical shopping habits. Look, it's near impossible that any given purchase you make is going to be completely ethically made. Somewhere along the line, something environmentally harmful or unjust from a labor standpoint probably happened while making your scented candle or cozy sweater. But even outside of avoiding the obviously less than ethical holiday shopping options, like buying everything at Amazon or, I don't know, buying all of your cousin's stock in fossil fuel companies, there are ways to ensure that you're doing your holiday shopping as ethically as possible. One of the easiest ways is to turn to a site like Ethical Consumer. There you can research a company's manufacturing and labor practices and determine for yourself if it's worthy of your money. One cool feature about Ethical Consumer is that it doesn't just tell you what not to buy, it gives you some alternative options as well. There's also another simple and cost-effective way to be a more ethical consumer. Just shop a little less. In 2018, the average American racked up around $1,000 in debt during the holiday season. And reports have found that Americans now own twice as many material items as they did 50 years ago. But there might be ways you can cut back on how much you buy this year, whether by telling people ahead of time that you'll be cutting back on gifts and explaining your reasoning, by creating a budget you can hold yourself accountable to, or even giving homemade gifts, all of which in turn can help to break a culture of excess. Still, supporting particular businesses intentionally can make a big impact, which is why you might support BIPOC-owned businesses. Due to historic and systemic disenfranchisement, people of color, and particularly black people, have been denied opportunities to build wealth and financial power. That has vastly impacted generational wealth over the years. A 2016 survey from the Federal Reserve showed that black families have only 10 cents for every dollar held by a typical white family. The pandemic has only worsened financial disparities. According to a report from the National Bureau of Economic Research, the number of black business owners plummeted by nearly 41% in the wake of COVID-19. By using your purchasing power at black-owned businesses, you're not only helping to strengthen local black economies, it can also contribute to shrinking the racial wealth gap, foster more job creation for black people, and help to hold larger companies accountable in regard to diverse representation. But this only happens if black-owned businesses are supported on a wide scale, not just by a few people. So, how can you help to build a groundswell of support? For starters, there's Support Black Owned, a website and mobile app that locates black-owned businesses from all over the country. You can turn to Eat Okra for finding black-owned restaurants and food services, and African American Literature Book Club for a database of black-owned bookshops across the U.S. You might try some of these other databases, too. Black-Owned Brooklyn, We Buy Black, Black Nation, Official Black Wall Street, Where You Came From, and I Am Black Business. And there's always Instagram for finding other smaller, independent Black-owned shops to support. Start off by following some hashtags like support Black business, support Black art, and share Black stories. There are plenty of resources out there, and they're just a Google search away. Take part in USPS's Operation Santa. For over a century, the United States Postal Service has manned Operation Santa, which gives children and their families gifts and essentials they might not get otherwise. Like everything in 2020, it's running a bit differently this year. Normally, volunteers would go to their local post office, read letters to Santa, pick a few out, and then buy, wrap, and ship the gifts to the kids who asked for them. This year, children will still write letters to Santa, but for the first time ever, Operation Santa will be going completely virtual, with each letter uploaded to the Operation Santa website. If you're sending one, it just needs to be received before December 15th, and ideally, addressed to Santa's special mailing address. Make sure to be specific about any clothing and shoe sizes, and any toy requests should be specific as well. If you're looking to help a child this year, you can adopt a letter. Due to the pandemic, however, there will be no in-person adoptions this time around. Simply wrap the gift according to the guidelines, sign it with Santa's name, and bring it to a participating post office. Donate your cash effectively. If you want to donate your money this holiday season, you should make sure you do so effectively. That starts with picking a trusted, reliable organization. You can turn to charity watchdog sites like Charity Navigator, Charity Watch, and the Better Business Bureau's Wise Giving Alliance to make sure your money will go where you think it's going when supporting a nonprofit. 
Even if you're just getting started with donating for the holiday season, you should make sure to establish some sort of plan for checking where your money's going, whether it's for a recurring or one-time donation. Crowdfunding campaigns, for example, should be transparent about how much money they need to reach their goal and how that money will be used. When you know those two things, it becomes easier to gauge how much you should donate because you'll understand the impact it can have. Whether you're donating to a crowdfunding campaign or a nonprofit, you should feel welcome to ask questions. If someone is pushing you to donate right away without answering any of your questions, that is a red flag. Do not make that donation. Instead, research an organization you trust and then come up with a payment plan. You should know how much and when you're going to contribute just to keep everything secure. No matter how you're spending this holiday season, we hope you'll try to spread some cheer with the businesses and causes that you support. It matters where you put your money, so put it somewhere good.